Hi, this is Janos, it's Reverb Audio, and I'm sharing something little bit special today. And it's application node on the compression driver in my voice of Lancelot speakers. So as uh, you know from my videos that I'm using the compression driver bare, no horn attached to it, and it's firing up. And uh, this gives a completely different character to the sound compared to a traditional way of firing a horn, uh, the compression driver to the front and putting a horn in the front. And uh, I had two of my friends over on this weekend and we did a, a little bit of experimenting and uh, they, they are also long time audiophiles, they have been uh, audiophiles even longer than I have, I have more experience and uh, we came to interesting conclusions that I would like to share. And uh, so one of the things is that uh, when you fire the, the horn up, it gives a very different uh, character to the sound. You have basically uh, an image that's uh, created when, when you have omnidirectional speakers. So you do not have a, like here, there, there's like, like if there's a singer, then the singer's voice doesn't coalesce into a holographic uh, uh, virtual uh, voice coming from here, but it's uh, more like uh, a normal singing coming from a space in a, in a real venue. And uh, that's something that took me a lot of time to realize that uh, when we have our special audiophile recordings and we have that uh, glorious holographic center image it's really a, 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 an artifact it is something that we hear that is uh, very much of a, of a studio product uh, that's not how things sound in life and uh, although it's very spectacular and i love it but uh, I actually refuse to listen that way every day to the music because it's just so different from how a real singer sounds, how real instruments sound and uh, and and what it does is that uh, okay, I will come in to that point. So what we did on this weekend is that we flipped the uh, compression drivers like that. So they fire towards the audience. And uh by playing around with that, there, there were certain things that we have, uh, have established. And uh, one of the things that we have established is that when you are in your living room for the 288 Altec compression driver, you don't need a horn to make it work. It, it works perfectly well even without a horn. And, uh, and also, as a side note, that when you use a, a compression driver bare, then you do not EQ the sound. So, so you cannot just plop in a horn or take it off. It's not, not, not comparable. If you add a horn to it, then you have to EQ down the 1 kHz through 3 kHz region. Because that's how, by nature, when you add, add the horn, those sounds from 1 kHz to 3 will be quite a bit exaggerated compared to the rest of the spectrum. However, without the horn, we do not have that issue. So I do not have any additional EQ to cut down the 1 through 3 kHz region. And uh, so, so without that, you can use the bare horn, I mean the bare compression driver, and uh, one, you don't need a horn, and two, you don't need that extra EQ. And, and of course, horns are, are good things. You can play around with them a lot, and actually you can go quite mad with it to find the perfect horn, but uh, you add one more problem to the equation, plus you need a second problem, which is the uh, network to EQ down the exact range to cut it down and that doesn't just uh, depend on the compression driver it depends on the flare of the horn it depends on your room acoustics everything to make it perfect and that's why you go down into a tinkering alley that will take you 
tens of years to get it right because even though there's like computer modeling available but once you uh, have gone that road you will figure out in a few years that computer models get you to the ballpark but you the hard work is all based on your sweat and tears and uh, laughter uh, computers cannot uh, do uh, something extraordinary they if you use computer modeling you can make a difference between a bad speaker and a good speaker but if you want to take a good to excellent that's not happening with computer models they are just a tool like a crutch to help you walk but to win the olympics as some say that requires your own hard graft anyway we are not talking about olympics here we are talking about relaxed music listening and one thing that uh, we have noticed is that you truly don't need that horn and that extra system here for a living room listening experience with compression drivers and these Altec type sound. However, why are then horns so prevalent? That's because uh, if you put them into a huge room, you absolutely need the horn to project the sound. So what I'm, uh, what I have here is that basically, this in this fashion, this loudspeaker can play extremely loud in my room. However, if I go out to the garden, from there, I, I barely hear anything coming out from the room. It, it, the sound stays here. Now, if you have a horn there. And, and I have the horn like facing that way, it will project out the sound and even if I'm there in the garden, I can hear music as loud uh, as uh, like crazy. And that's not happening when you don't have a horn because what the horn does, it focuses the acoustic energy to be thrown out to a distance. This is not happening when you are not using a horn. So basically, if you are wondering about uh, these large format compression drivers, uh, then uh, you absolutely need the horn when you, uh, when you have a really big room, you have a hole, not a room, then it's a must. And also, one more thing, if you fire them at you, they will project, of course, uh, longer than firing them up so when you fire them up that's when you have to uh, sit closest to them or they would prefer i mean that's the shortest stroke so if you do it like this way maybe you can project it out little longer little further compared to firing them up and now what i have noticed when listening to them is that when they are facing us uh, then uh, there there is a, a somewhat uh, better timing coherence. So like when there's a drum snap, then the snap is more more impactful, more energetic compared to running firing that up. Uh, however, it it's also way way more fatiguing than than firing it up up. And um, why I am mentioning fatigue, I'm mentioning it because we listen to them at an exorbitant volume so so when i'm talking about on my channel that uh, one one watt amplifier is enough for music listening uh, that's for my taste and for the taste of the majority of my audio friends but uh, there are some for whom it is inadequate and, and we were busting the, the ampexes at, at a peak volume, basically. And uh, Kintaro, the cat, he, he went upstairs. He was upstairs with Nelly. Uh, they, they closed the door. And, and even through closed doors and second floor, she said that the volume was unbearably loud. And, and when we were listening to the Taiko song with the, the, the huge drums, the doom, 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 then, then Kintaro was just uh, freaked out. He thought it's the end of the world coming and someone is probably shelling the house or something like that. 
and through listening from here it was like uh, the energy was absolutely brutal otherworldly uh, but uh, yes yeah, so if you are listening to that sort of volumes and and uh, then uh, you can hear things uh, that, that like listening fatigue can creep in however uh, what we were doing we were using uh, the micro mega stage uh, uh, five uh, which is heavily modified as one of the sources and we were using the ifi streamer and the smsl streamer so when we listened to the smsl streamer then that was uh, fatiguing the micro mega was not fatiguing and the ifi wasn't fatiguing either but with the smsl we could hear the uh, quite noticeable fatigue at but only at extreme SPLs like uh, talking 100 plus peaks I mean hundred I think 110 dB plus peaks easily uh, it was excruciatingly loud anyway so what else I wanted to say also that uh, the listening session we had was on Saturday between 1 and 3 p.m. And that's the time when the line AC has the poorest quality. So we get a snapshot of how the system sounds at, it, at its absolute worst. And, uh, and I think that, that when the line AC quality is excellent, then I suspect that probably even the SMSL would not uh, create any fatigue at all because that's one of the hallmarks of uh, line AC quality in my system that when it's really bad then at loud volumes you, you will start to get uh, fatigue uh, with, with my equipment it's, it's absolutely minimal and, and it doesn't really happen but when you put in something lower grade like uh, that SMS sound then it becomes uh, quite noticeable and bothersome however it still wasn't big enough to, to cause like a permanent uh, fatigue for the ear. After the session, my ears were not tired. So, but that's what happens when I listen to showroom systems. They are playing it so loud. It's, it's painful to listen to. And when you go home, uh, you can't bear with yourself because your ears are ringing and hurting so much that you have don't know what to do. So. Uh, this is my fun application note for the day uh, and I have to share at the last bit that there are some people who prefer it uh, firing up to create a more natural sound how instruments sound live or you can flip it to this way and this creates a studio sound this is uh, the sound that you get for, from typical audiophile gear and if uh, audiophile sound is your preference, this by far will be your choice. And if you grew up on, uh, on going to concerts and, and having musicians in your family, this will be your absolute favorite choice. So, and the good thing is that you can flip between them uh, anytime. So, so that's my luxury is that I can enjoy both whenever I want each. So thank you for tuning in. Have an astonishingly good day. Please like and subscribe. Bye bye.